June Youth Report. Nothing from Sergi Arkayan in Azerbaijan, but respect that Jeff found us someone interesting in Croatia. Goalkeeper Franjo Jujevic is 15 years old, has high potential, and is at least 50 rated right now. We signed him up and we checked the youth squad. 65, not bad. If he was 16, we'd promote him right away to be Marinovic's backup. Thomas Muller is one of the few ultras who's watched every one of these episodes of Pennyworth FC, and he wanted me to dive into some stats. Thomas, here you go, buddy. First up is the ever popular goals stat. You guys heard about this fellow Benjamin Jacobs, AKA Benny Jakes? League two legend broke the scoring record with 55 goals in league play, plus seven goals in cup competitions for a total of 62. 62 times this guy put the ball past the keeper. Incredible. And look how many assists he still managed to get. It would be insane to expect the same output next season, but I bet he'll still be productive. Tello Asgard came second with 19 goals and 21 assists in all competitions. Tello was a great early season signing and will be a big part of this club moving forward. As we move down the list, we see a lot of guys contributed goals this season. Jack Peake with 15 and more importantly 27 assists. Connor Mason with 14 goals. Tommy Myers and Sammy Benchama with 11 apiece. And remember, Benchama was injured for more than two months. Sammy also had 13 assists and emerged as one of our best passers. Fred Slater with nine goals, showing dependability when called upon. And then we have the two rising stars and Henry Groves with seven goals and Lewis Garrett with six. Odermott probably exceeded expectations there with five. Then you got a bunch of squad guys chipping in three goals or less. McFadden who scored a few early in the season but didn't get much playing time thereafter. Harvey Nichols, I think, had one good game. Nick Warren had a couple. Ashworth got both of his in one game. Oakley, just one goal? Felt like more than that. He always seemed to play well. And here we have the Frenchman, Marius Lecoq. Played four games, had just one goal, but three assists. Not bad at all. One of the first players Sir GRKN found for us. As for clean sheets, when it comes to outfield players, it's basically just corresponds to games played. So let's just look at the goalkeepers. Stefan Marinovic, 12 clean sheets in 39 appearances. Patrick McFarlane, still on the team, six clean sheets in 14 games. He definitely played better after that terrible preseason. All right, let's look at some player values. When we reached League Two, we had exactly zero players valued at a million dollars or more. And now we have nine. That is called progress. The most valuable is our first big youth signing from way back in August, center back Nathan Perrier. At 18 years old, he's valued at just over $4 million. And look at that percentage increase of 101%. He's also our only player to reach a 70 rating so far. He won't be the last one. Henry Groves has the second highest transfer value at $3.2 million. He's only 16 years old and is already very, very good at 66 overall. Sammy Benchama had that injury setback, but he still carries a value of $2.7 million at 21 years old. He went up 125% this year. I'd say that was a good signing. I think we paid a million and a half for him. And this is an example of how a club makes the money needed to climb the ladder. We're not selling Benchama this season, but possibly next season and for a big profit. Daniel Van Vliet. Okay, so we signed this guy up right away. He was a 68 overall as a youth player, making him instantly one of our best. And we just didn't play him much down the stretch. He only got one game, but he'll be useful next season and he will play a ton. Or heck, we could sell him for two and a half million right now. But do we really need two and a half million? I think we'd rather have Dan Van here. Tello Asgard's valued at just over two million. You all know how I feel about this guy. He's one of my favorites. I'm curious as to why he's not valued higher than this actually, as he's got the same rating as Benchama, but he's a year younger. His value increased by 90% this season. Lewis Garrett, the heir apparent to Benny Jakes, is valued at just under two mil. This 18 year old Englishman just knows how to score. Then we have our three veterans in center forward Benny Jakes at 1.3 million, keeper Marinovich at 1.1, and winger Connor Mason at 1.1. And if you're wondering how much Lecoq is worth, you can't put a price on Lecoq. But hypothetically, he'd bring in 600k. This Lecoq has grown 26% over the course of the season. He's a grower, not a shower. Pennyworth FC as a club is now worth $54 million. It says here we posted a loss of more than $5 million last season. I'm not sure how, since we didn't even spend all of our transfer budget. And a quick check on player statuses. Henry Groves is still showing potential to be special. Lewis Garrett is an exciting prospect. Perrier is showing great potential. And Asgard has that special something. You damn right he does. Checking shirt sales. There's been a change at the top. Last month, the top three were Asgard, Perrier, and Benchama. 
but this month it's Henry Groves jumping into the top spot. Two of our youth squad guys are unsettled and have decent arguments to be promoted to the senior squad, so we're calling up center back Jared Collins, 59 rated, and right back Gus Marion, who's 60 rated. Looking at contracts, we have 10 players with only two months left on their deals, and I'm okay with letting each and every one of them walk. The one we least like to lose is Tommy Myers because he really contributed this season, but he played far above his rating and should experience drastic regression this year. Just to keep me honest, we will check in on Myers at the end of next year to see if he equaled his output of 11 goals and 19 assists when he moves to a different team. There are six guys with a little over a year left, valued veterans like Jesse Oakley, Marinovich, Bradley Randall, Austin Rigby. We like having these guys. Giving them one-year extensions would make sense if for no other reason than to sell them if a decent offer comes in. Ben Jacobs has two years left. That's perfect. He'll be with us until he's 29, at which point we'll send him somewhere worthy of his skills. Everyone else with two or three years left is either highly skilled or highly promising, with the exception of the two Fredericks, striker Slater and winger Ashworth. Many of these players will be getting well-earned pay raises before League One play begins next season. Everyone in the squad basically falls into one of three categories. Category one, the departing. Tobin, Ratcliffe, Rhodes, McFarlane, Tyler, Pryor, Jennings, Nichols, Myers, and Bradshaw. We thank these guys for their service, but they'll all be leaving in one form or another, whether it's an expiring contract or we're selling them. Category two, squad guys. Oakley, Marinovich, Randall, Rigby, Warren, McFadden, Jacobs, Ali, Ashworth, Slater, Lecoq, Odermott, Peak, and Short. And the future. Garrett, Nicholson, Mason, Dodd, Perrier, Van Vliet, Groves, Benchama, and Asgard. These are the guys who will form the core moving forward. Checking some individual awards. League Two Player of the Year goes to Ben Jacobs. The League Two Golden Boot goes to Ben Jacobs. He scored 55 in league play. Four guys share second place with 18 goals. Ian Henderson of Salford City, Callum Cook of Bradford City, Aaron Collins of Bristol Rovers, whom we could not stop this year. And finally, Luke Molyneux of Hartlepool United. Our Team Player of the Year for Pennyworth FC, Ben Jacobs, obviously. Newcomer of the year, I'd probably have to say Nathan Perrier. Yes, he had a head start over the others, but he was rock solid from minute one. That means everything. We love consistency. Looking at some other teams and leagues. Joining us in the automatic promotion spots of League 2 are Exeter City and Bristol Rovers. The four-team playoff for the final promotion spot pits Bradford against Newport and Tranmere against Salford. Bradford and Salford make it to the final, and it is Bradford pulling out a 1-0 win at Wembley to gain promotion. Rotherham United are the League 1 winners. They'll be joined by Bolton and Ipswich in the championship. Relegated to League 2 are Morecambe, Fleetwood, Wimbledon, and Gillingham. In the championship, Bournemouth won by 12 points. The Cherries return to the Premier League along with Fulham and Sheffield. Relegated to League 1 are Derby, Blackpool, and Hull. In the Premier League, Manchester City edged out Chelsea for the title here and it's relegation for Burnley, Newcastle, and Norwich City. In the Belgian top flight, it's Club Rouge taking the title. In France, PSG blew everyone away. In Germany, a bit of an upset here, RB Leipzig takes the Bundesliga, with Bayern and Dortmund in second and third, respectively. Inter Milan are the champions of Italy. Atletico Madrid win the Spanish top flight. Look at Sevilla taking second, pushing Real Madrid to third and Barcelona to fourth. Champions League, not one single English team makes it to the semifinals. Real Madrid defeats Benfica and Bayern defeats Sevilla, and it's Bayern over Real Madrid 2-1 in the final. Europa League goes to Juventus, Europa Conference League to Tottenham, the FA Cup goes to Manchester City, the Carabao Cup goes to City as well, and Carlisle defeat Ipswich for the Papa John's. And we have a breaking news alert. Someone has gotten a hold of unapproved images of next year's kits and leaked them. They are all over YouTube already and elsewhere, so we might as well just show you. Not a drastic difference between this year's and next, aside from the cleaner, more streamlined look and some light colored trim on the collars and sleeves. Our away kids will be a bright yellow. Hey, other teams, do you see how this works? One dark option, one light. No kit clashes. Have some courtesy and follow suit, would you? Next episode, we're in League One. We re-signed some of our guys and might even sign some guys from other clubs. How much transfer budget will we get from Bruce and the board? It's business time. Don't miss it. Uh, as a side note here, by the time this uploads, I'll be recovering from knee surgery. So it may take me longer for editing and the like. 
I don't really know what to expect. I might actually get it out faster because I'll just be sitting around, but who knows. I truly, truly appreciate every single person who watches this series. Even you, Wes Nodell. You dang lurker. Okay, bye everyone. Oh. Bid you farewell and good luck, morons. Bye.